Dual Review is brought to you by NexusDigitalComics.com. On today's Dual Review, Comic-Con is coming up. We're going to tell you about our stuff. I'm RJ. And I just wanted to say thank you. You're welcome. Yeah, and I got you something. RJ works very, very hard. I go to sleep. So, because he's been working so hard, I got him this. Ta-da! Oh, awesome. Yeah. I haven't gotten a Joker yet. I've actually been waiting for a cool one. This is an awesome one. Yeah, I saw it and it's the art. Thought, thought of me, the crazy maniacal me. Actually, I, I saw it in your studio when I was looking at it. I was like, wow, that would look so cool in, in RJ's dark studio. Um, it's the Arkham City uh, play uh, play arts. Um, cool. He's got little Joker. teeth. Oh, teeth up here. And he's got a gun behind that, oh, that teeth smudge. There. Smudge. Oh, yeah, cool. So. Cool. So, thank yes, I, I appreciate everything that you're doing. You know, you work very hard, and I, I really do appreciate it. Thanks, Nick. I appreciate that. Let's get to it. Welcome to Wednesday, the 28th of March. Yay! Comic-Con Comic -Con is coming up, and uh, we have some product going out. One of the big things, as I tell you, as I've been telling you at the end of each episode for the last month or so, is about his card game, and we're going to show it to you right now. Yeah, I've been very hard at work at this for... Very hard. Actually, years creating the characters, and the last year creating this game. Uh, not quite that much, but I've been doing a comic as well. Comic is probably going to need a little bit more time and a little more funding to, to cook. So I'm going to be doing a Kickstarter on that. But right now, we have the game. And, uh, yeah, I've got uh, a nice tin here, a nice window. And inside, we've got scoring pips, different colors. And I've got 20 die, 10 black, 10 white. And then three decks of cards. And this deck is character deck and scorecards, all that. And then these are the playing cards. No, oh, it's upside down. And uh, so it's all nicely engineered. I'm kind of rejecting that whole um, bigger box right. thing. Because you, you get these games like like um, Nightfall and even um, Dungeon Run. Dungeon Run was like this big game, big box, and then you take it out. And it's like, what? There's like all this space here. And I don't know. I know some of them are like geared towards expansions. And I mm -hmm. will have expansions here. And I think they'll still fit in here. I'm going to work on that. Um, uh, but... Yeah, I reject that because they're like trying to sell you, they're trying to trick you into thinking there's more than there really is or right. something. Or, you know, I guess I, you know, it, it was hard to find the perfect tin, and it was hard to get, you know, advertising that goes with this and all that stuff on the, you know, on the package. So I guess it's easier just to have a box printed. But, but, uh, yeah, I, I like it. You know, I feel like a. Like Mac does it right, where they have everything in a like really compact cube or whatever. So I want to do the same thing, and and also you know if you're going over to your friends, it's pretty compact. It's not going to rattle around too much. Uh, anyway, so this game uh, is based on my new property, Fisk. Uh, Fisk stands for uh, Fully Integrated System Kinetics, and it's basically um, prosthetics. It's uh, cyber prosthetics. Uh, it, it taps into your nervous system so you can run the machine arm. Uh, with your own nervous system. Anyway, uh, that's where the name comes from. Uh, it follows three different factions. Uh, there are the the Grift, which is basically a runaway government, which is it's a <clears throat> it's a police state. Uh, the world has become a big police state. The Resistors are the Trikins, uh, which which Fisk there's a, there's a, a member named Fisk is a part of. Uh, and then there's the Blood Fallen, which are basically vampires, but Blood Fallen uh, there's a there's a a science and a history that I've I've come up with behind that, why they're uh, vampires and what makes them vampires, and it's really more akin to a virus than anything else. Uh, anyway, so getting to the card game, uh, I have 36 different characters for you to choose from. Each one has their own art and their own specials, their own stats, and their own backstory on the back of the cards. Yep, on the back of the cards, they've got little little backstories for each of them. I really do have a, a rich world that I'm working on, uh, and so this is kind of the first uh, hint of that, or the first you know outing of that, All right? Uh, the intro into it. Uh, Even uh, here's 
here's the Triken. Those are the blood, blood fallen on the red, and the Triken are on gray, and a bunch of different characters. Uh, anyway, we'll we'll have a website up soon so you can look more in depth at the cards and some of the characters there. Uh, and then the last group is the Grift, which they are kind of the you know, they're they're run by the government, but these guys are mostly experiments. Uh, so they have some really unique uh, powers. You know, one of them's got wings. One of them is like a back truck, <laughs> like really big. <laughs> Uh, and I definitely pull inspiration from everywhere, uh, so you'll definitely see things that are familiar, and then hopefully something that you've not seen before. Uh, and there's scorecards, nice scorecards that have both sides of, when you're on one side, you're wounded, which means that other things can happen. Um, different rules apply. Um, another thing I want to tell you about the game is that I created this uh, for, you know, one to three player. You can also play team-based, but you can also... As I said, one, so you can play solitaire. I really thought that was important. Uh, not a lot of games do a solitaire function. Yep. And like Dungeon Run says, one to whatever. But when you play it, it's basically just kind of how long will it take for you to win. Yeah. This one you can actually fail, like quite easily too. If you don't play it right, and sometimes if you know if the, the cards are are faded to you know yeah, beat you, gonna you're, you're going to lose. So you're going to be damn it. Um, but there are different levels, you know. I. We had a lot of fun testing this game out for quite a while now. I think that was the best part of my job. Yeah, it was really fun. Um, and I, I think it's designed really well. You know, we tried really hard to get it done. And we have also rejected against the fast game. Yes. Um, this game usually takes about two hours just for, like, the basic game. And I know that the, that's a long time for some people, but we had so much fun playing yeah. it. And, and it wasn't just... Be, he, he had nothing to do with my... You know, he doesn't know my character, so... He had fun doing it without yep. that, without that knowledge. <clears throat> and it was just a lot of fun that we decided to keep it as is. Yeah, because we tried shortening it, and the game which wasn't the same. We had the most fun just sitting there playing for two, three hours. Just Yeah, yeah, it, it's just, you know, no. it takes the time that it takes. And there are different play versions, so you can... Basically, I have a, a map, which is not included yet. I don't, I, I'm, I'm still waiting for the maps. They just pop it at the end. Um, you can you can basically play to take over the whole world, or you can just take, you know, three or four ter or four or seven territories because each continent is a territory, um, and uh, you know so you do have different levels. I mean, when you're playing solitaire, you can you can do uh, two characters against two characters. You could do all five characters against five. Char I mean, it's like there's there's a myriad of different options you can do. Uh, so uh, like I said, there's twelve characters for each. Oh, excuse me, faction. So there's a lot to choose from. Each one is different. Um, these cards are the strike cards and the... the these are the playing cards. The right. strike cards and block cards and stun cards. and So they, they kind of... So let's, let's, let's really quickly run down how... Like, what they happens. look a lot like traditional playing cards. Essentially, they're set out that way. Essentially what's going to happen is I'm going to pick a faction and because I picked it up I'm going to be blood fallen or blood veiled. Um... And he is going to pick a faction, and since these are blue, he is going to be Griff. And then we pick how many characters we want. Right. And now each character has uh, stats that are very important because, like, uh, so you have you have uh, five ways to attack. You know, you have explosive firearms, blunt, uh, edged weapons, and then hand to hand. And uh, each character excels in dif different areas. Some yeah. of them are slow, heavy hitters, and some of them are fast. Not so heavy hitters. Right, and the, the dice really come into play uh, when you're playing in, in right. a group or versus uh, because it, on the card it tells you how many strike cards you can play in a chain. And what you do is you, you take these cards and you build chains that are then resolved against the character you're attacking. Right, but if you have uh, um, uh, block, block cards, evade, there's a block it can be card. With it, you throw down a block card. So and the, diff the different I'm just gonna the different stats on this uh, have to do with how many die you can roll, and so the higher number, you know, blocks and whatever hit points and right. all that stuff. That's how you determine how strong the strike is. Uh, so go ahead. Uh, I think that's what I was gonna say. Oh, okay. Um, there's also uh, how long your attack chain can be, which is important. Like right now, uh, and defense chain. There's there's an offensive phase and a defensive phase. And right. It's a lot to go through, you know, in a, in a review like this, so we're just kind of giving you a flavor. And yeah. If you're interested, there'll be a website shortly, and you'll be able to check it out. Um, but we had a lot of fun designing it, and a lot of fun, and a fun, yeah, some inside jokes there. <laughs> uh, you'll wonder why the Enviro is on there. Enviro is done. Enviro is done. Yeah. That, that's actually an inside joke. I don't even think it has any real purpose anymore. Well, Stun well, definitely Stun does. does, but not Enviro Stun. Well, I tried to design this game... Um, 
envisioning the battle in my head. And so Envira Stun came from, you know, like throwing dirt or sand in someone's eye or knocking down some rocks or whatever, you know, right, that, turning off the lights. That was a big influence for us when, when we were both playing, designing, uh, you was know. how would people actually fight. Right. And that was very important. Even even down to, okay, so when we, when we do our attack straight, uh, attack chain, is it, do we go from left to right or from right to left? We well, people thinking, like, swipe this yeah. way, so that's how it is. And, you know, they block this one. Yeah. So, block in so yes, we, we, we definitely went with, uh, you know, battle inspiration here. Yeah, and all the characters, uh, I tried to, you know, balance them very well. We, and you I know, think we've you did very well on that. We've tested them. Uh, works works really well. Um, You know, there is a definitely some strategy, and there's also some chance. Yes. So it's a good balance. And you've got lots of die. Uh, you do do a lot of die rolling. But I've never, I've never honestly found it. I've annoying. never met anyone who was like, "Oh, I have to roll a die." Damn, you <laughs> yeah. know? Yeah. Well, I mean, in Dungeon Run, it kind of got a little bit much. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, yeah, that's very true. Because um, you're like rolling like seven die at a time. Or whatever. Oops, I screwed that up. Anyway, uh, so yeah, it's a lot of fun. Um, I hope that everybody enjoys it. Yes, and I'm sure that you know you will because I had a lot of fun. And again, I'm not. Uh, this this was before I knew anything about his his you know characters his universe that he had created and that's where these characters come from. So with, without any prior knowledge, this is a fun game. I had a lot of fun playing it. You know, really really getting to know each character and their abilities and their specials. You know, where they're strong at and using them in conjunction with other characters who you know who would be great. You know. Yeah, and as I said, you know, I created these characters actually kind of in a a novel. Mind friend, you know, like I was, I was. Oh, you meant to write a novel? Yeah, um, but it started becoming like, boy, this would be really good for comics, and uh, to get everybody introduced, you know, maybe doing a game would be a good idea. And I really had so much fun that you know we have other games we're gonna we're working on. Yeah, as soon as Comic Con's over, I think we're gonna get started on. We've already started, but uh, well, we have well, more to do. Okay, I see what you mean. Yeah. yeah. Right. So so this is this has really been a good experience and. Uh, I we'll think you'll enjoy it. We had a lot of fun. Yeah, for the tenth time. And I don't think, and I don't think, uh, you know, the sales of how we do with this is going to stop us from creating other games. Yeah, and and the, uh, I you know, I was very conscientious about how much this is going to cost. You know, I right. I know a lot of indie games are very expensive. Uh, this itself will probably be thirty seven, thirty five dollars, which, uh, you know, the materials cost quite a bit. So I have to charge at least that much. Um, but I think you're really getting a good deal for the, yeah. the amount of. Especially since you can play, you can play up to you know how many people can you play? Well, I'm I'm now? I'm going to suggest six. I'm going to suggest six is good because as the most, un unless you have two games and you put the cards together, because then you could do more. Because really, everybody has to have a hand of at least like eight right. to make it work well. Uh, so I'm going to recommend six. But you can do. I mean, you could do one per character if you wanted to. So up to fifteen. Uh, because there can only be five on a team, you know, mm -hmm. kind of thing. So, uh, anyway, there'll be a lot of lore and backstory to go with this. Uh, this is just kind of the, the, the opening statement that I'm making. And, uh, yeah, uh, a lifetime is right here. Yeah, and it's it's exciting. I, I can't wait to see how we do it, uh, uh, selling it in Comic-Con. So. Yeah, and I'm going to be at Comic-Con basically playing it with whoever wants to play with me yeah. or by myself, you know, answering questions um, or some of the other booth attendees. Which would be my sisters. Uh, possibly even Nick himself. Hello. Uh, and uh, Okay, so another thing we wanted to talk about really quickly would be his short stories. Uh, well, I don't really know what to say about them, though. Well, what was the inspiration? You, you've been kicking around characters for a long time, too. I, yeah, actually, the inspiration for these short stories, well, there's, there's several. There's, um, uh, we recently reviewed Foolproof, so one of, one of um, the stories that I have called Pawns is... Not really, uh, uh, it just gen it's partly uh, um, inspired by Foolproof, but a lot of it, you know, when I first met RJ, our goal was to make comics, and, and so, you know, we came up with these characters, you know, we had Marshall, we had, uh, um, I don't think I named him, but Ricochet would be the parkour character, um, you know, and some other characters that we came up with, and, you know, we really just sat down and said, this is what we want to do, this is how we want it to be, this is, you know, and uh, so I just kind of wrote... They're more like prologues. They're short stories, but they're also more like prologues. And then I needed a character to tie it all in together. Um, so I came up with the suit, who is an unnamed... Uh, uh, he, he's not really a hero, and he's not really a villain. It's kind of complicated, his role. Um, and it's 
I want him to to be that kind of ambiguous, you know, is he a good guy, is he a bad guy type deal. Uh, so his stories, he has several stories where everyone else has only one that kind of tie everything in together, you know, nice and neat, kind of like uh, the Sin City movie where everything's kind of neatly packaged like that. Uh, yeah, and the, the stories are really a lot of fun. I think they kind of have a noir flavor, you know. You have, you right. have a, a love of the verse, yeah, as they well, say. Thank you. So uh, yeah, it's, yeah, I think it's a lot I think, of fun, and it, yeah, it's going to be cheap, and it's just kind of like an intro to what right. we're. The, neither of us are traditional comic artists. I mean, I can do it. It just takes so long for me. I'm not a you know well versed, fast, fluid artist. And I have the artistic talent of a kumquat. <laughs> so. Not not too, but uh, uh, so neither of us can can really um, do the art that we want to right. in a fast enough fashion to right. sell it or whatever. So we need help, and we're kind of. Putting this out there to to gain interest, right? And that's that's the ultimate goal of this this uh, this series of prologues is to show it to artists, you know, and say, look, this is what I want to do. Would you join? And since I can't pay you, you'd kind of be you know doing it and make as damn friends. fun and make damn fun games. games, games the, you know, just meantime. just trying to grow our conglomerate so that we can start a business. Yeah. So that's it for today. Thank you for your attention, and uh, we hope we see some of you at Comic Con. Yes. If not, uh, the game will, co of course, be available, as well as the short stories will be available online. And uh, we'll, uh, yeah, <laughs> we'll be uh, happy yeah. to answer any questions or anything else you have for those. Absolutely. Uh, this is uh, our love. This is what we did. So, All right, uh, follow us on Facebook, subscribe on YouTube, tell us what you think. When you get to Emerald City Comic Con, please uh, come say hi to us, buy his card game. Uh, and as always, leave comments. Comments, fist, comments. Fist for the card game. Fist the card game. Yes. Okay. All right. Bye. See ya. Oh. <laughs> Yay. Catching up. Success. Yay. Yeah, he's been ahead far too long, like three episodes. Now. Yeah, three whole episodes. <laughs> Bye. That was a lot of fun. Next time, we take a look at X Men animation. Have I ever ranted about how I hate the name iPad? And it sounds like a feminine hygiene product. I really freaking hate it. They're, they're so smart over at Apple. Who was the br you know brilliant guy that was like, I know, let's just change a letter. It's like they already have the iPhone. They've already broken. I mean, it has a P in it. But why couldn't they have done like the i Slate or the i Awesome or something? I Awesome. iPad. That time of month, get your iPad. No disrespect. On today's dual review, it's our focal point Comic Con! And stuff, raise the roof, whatever, what the fuck? That's stupid, I hate that. <laughs> Comic Con! Comic Con! Okay. Key. I might pose them just like that. Or like that. Or like that. <laughs> They're all cool. All right. Cool. Where'd you get that? At my comic shop. I haven't seen it before. Uh, not actually, actually not at mine. It was the comic shop in Redmond. Your comic shop. That's I one. wish. I have two comic shops. You I mean, might. I have, don't have two comic. I have two comic shops. Even bester friend. <laughs> if I had a comic shop. The comic shop. The comic shop. Hey, uh, can I uh, borrow this? <laughs> <laughs> so I do that already. Uh, all right. Yeah, you do. Oh, my God.